You're listening to the Mart Digital Live podcast produced by Felzine. Follow us everywhere at F-E-L-T-Z-I-N-E and follow me, Mark Digital, at M-A-R-K-D-I-G-I-T-A-L-H-D as in high definition. If you're a fan of the podcast and want to join the conversation or listen live, you can do that by hopping on our Discord channel. That link can be found in the description of this and every podcast we produce, along with the links to all of our other social media channels. So check that out and leave us a review wherever you're listening. We have this really wild story coming out of Mexico where it seems like nine members of a rich Mormon family, which seems to go by the um, by LeBaron, it's L-E-B-A-R-N. Um, the, the LeBaron family is a Mormon family that's been living in Mexico who has caught themselves in the crossfire of some really intense warfare that's happening between two cartels in, in Mexico seems to be northern mexico from what i understand i I don't know mexico like too super well uh but i but i have but i do get a lot of information from my uh from my close friend john who spends a lot lot of time in mexico city and and has traveled all throughout mexico so i kind of know what's going on there when the whole thing happened with the um i think it's the sonola cartel yeah i think it's the uh, the the uh, yeah the sonola um they uh they were they the son of El Chapo who was the head and creator of the cartel had um had been captured and then they went to war with the government they literally went to war with the army and the cartel won and they had to return El Chapo's son uh you know unscratched so following that the thing that was a couple weeks ago we now have this new story that's that's really shaking shit up because Trump is talking about it. Trump threatened to, to send in the American military to handle these type of situations. And the reason why I'm talking about it and why I think it's pretty interesting is because this is the type of things that that war is fought over, right? The LeBaron family is like a Mexican um, American family at this point in the, in the sense that they actually have uh, U.S. and Mexican passports and they're somehow dual citizens. It seems to be like a dual citizen sort of uh, community that they lived in. These people were rich. They're rich, powerful Mormon families, so they can pretty much do whatever they want. At some point, um, the one one of the members of the family, Benjamin LeBaron, uh, he was killed in 2009 because it's like a decade ago. He was killed because he had spoken out against the the cartels and he had spoken out against drug trafficking, especially after they were demanding a million dollar ransom of his younger brother. So. We have a pretty wild situation here. Some people were saying they were caught in the crossfire. I, I also don't understand why this couldn't just be a straight up attack. Like maybe they were just targeted, and you know um, these cartels are not are not against killing and shooting up women and children. Um, but neither is the U.S. government. Neither is the Mexican government, right? Like it's not it's not the case that like I'm I'm trying to say that these people are super evil, right? But um, governments kill women and children. Governments kill anybody indiscriminately for any sort of gain that they need, especially if you're trying to stop their profits. And the cartels are doing the same shit, right? If anything, the cartels learn from the best, and they act more like the American government than uh, the Mexican actual government does, right? So. I think that this is very interesting. I think that if America decides to go to war with the Mexican cartels, it is an even bigger slap in the face to Mexico because it looks like they can't solve their own issues. And especially after the embarrassment that the Mexican army faced with having to return El Chapo's son, it just seems like this would be a really big mess and, and just something that... Um, I don't know, that just only gets worse, right? And I think that these sort of stories, when you hear these sort of stories of, like, one rich family being murdered, my ears automatically pop up and perk up because this is the type of shit that has started wars throughout eternity, right? All it takes is for one rich family to be impacted who has the means to to reach out to the media. One family that has the means... To that if they lose someone, their way of retaliation, they have an ear to the president, right? They are the people who can, um, I mean, people, people just, <laughs> look, let's, let's be honest. The government uh, of America does not like it when 
rich people's lives are are taken away or to be honest even just their lives being made more difficult like the united states government is i mean one of the things that makes the u.s strong is that our government is willing to go in and militarily put pressure on people that stop the 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 free will of what Americans want to do in another place, right? So if Americans want to go to Hawaii, then they're going to take out the Hawaiian government or Hawaiian leadership, whoever's there. If Americans want to go to anywhere in the world, they're going to erase the 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 situation that's there and they're going to implement a new one, right? That's what the whole idea of banana republics are about. It's about this idea that America will come in if it's for bananas, if it's for oil, and shit, even if it's just for the fact that a rich Mormon family gets to create a settlement somewhere, America will go in and defend that. So Trump's, you know, I, I would say this is probably one of the things that Trump has done that's the, even more traditionally American, is to even speak about sending in our troops because... Uh, rich Americans have been killed. This is the history of America. This is the history of why we end up going to war. It's because rich people's interests are going to be impacted by that, right? And if there's ever this idea that rich Mormons or any rich American can't go to Mexico and have their safety backed up by the U.S. government, then there's a lot less incentive to be a rich American, right? This is why rich families from all over the world also immigrate to America to become even richer here. Because if you get rich here, and you are rich here, let's not even say get rich, because it's people don't even get rich anymore, right? When we're talking about, like, real rich. When we're talking about the real, like, 1% of the 1%, right? The the 20 or so families that control the entire world. People, people don't even get there anymore. You have to be, like, born into that. I think that this is scary in that sense, um, I don't think that the Mexican cartels give a fuck. I think that Mexican cartels are, are totally willing to go to war with with American uh, troops. I don't I don't think that they're afraid. I don't think that they're afraid of anything. I think that they understand what they have is not only um, physical weapons and physical power, but in a lot of ways they actually have the trust of the towns that you know we might look at and, and say that they have under siege or say that they're violently controlling and there might be some of that but from a lot of the things that i've seen and a lot of things that i've heard um from my friends and from people who do spend a lot of time in mexico is that the car people are kind of okay with the cartels and what people have more of a problem with is actually the government and the government's corruption um that involves the cartels and not so much this kind of like black and white um, way that the cartels are, are kind of facing business. That, that's not the, the real problem here. So with that being the case, if Americans want to go in and fight a war in Mexico, it is very much so like a like a Korean War situation. It is very much so like a, you know, a Vietnam War situation where we can't win that. Right. Like we can't win these wars where the people where the where the people have time on their side. The Mexican cartels have time on their side. They, at some point, America has to go home. At some point, America has to leave. And that's the one thing that even, God, even if you want to get down to it, that even people, groups, and terrorists like ISIS have learned is at the end of the day, America has to leave at some point, right? And these people are willing to fight forever. They're willing to put the resources in their communities for their communities to believe in them and so that they're fighting a, a law that's just on a slightly higher, different kind of like wave, right? Where, where they're fighting for it for something that's bigger than them. At that point, it almost becomes religious, right? Our troops can be brainwashed, yes, but there's only so much so that you can do to convince someone to fight a war that's not their war. But when someone brings it to your front steps, it's your war at that point. So I think that um, I hope that, you know, we don't go to a stage where Americans are sending, you know, right now we've already talked about sending troops to the border. Right. And I think if we go from having troops on the Mexican-American border and we also have troops in Mexico, 
even further fighting a, a drug war, essentially. Like, if the war on drugs, which is, is, is losing popularity here, is dying out here because of, or because of just judicial um, trends, right? Like, waves that are happening in all levels of, of, of courtrooms where people are basically saying, we don't want to lock people up. But there was a trial somewhere, I think in, like, Alabama or some shit, somewhere in the Deep South, where... Um, they they couldn't they couldn't even find uh, they couldn't put a jur- a jury together to even like convict someone of of a, of a petty drug case right like the people now have just decided that we don't want to pursue the drug war in the way that we've been because it's racist because it's classist it's because it's just everything is everything fucking terrible so if we have that right if we kind of shift that to then fighting a drug war in Mexico. I mean, come on, like this. I mean, this just reeks of like, like Vietnam Part Two, where you're sending people to go to war and fight somewhere where they don't even want to fight their damn selves, right? Like, I don't think that U.S. troops want to go into Mexico and like, fucking like, start killing cartel members, right? Like, come on, man. Like, even to be even more real about it. A lot of these people are taking drugs and popping molly that fucking comes from Mexico, man. These people are not, like, like I don't think that this, the, the way that they're trying to make this the enemy is totally just ripped straight up out of the playbook that America keeps keeps going back to, right? This counterinsurgency narrative, this narrative where we're going to send in troops to just defend Whatever the fuck is going on, if there's, if there's U.S. citizens involved, then it's automatic strike kill and just like have no kind of idea about what this might mean in the bigger picture right think about it if, if, imagine if we do kill one cartel right you just totally erase one cartel what do you do with the other one who who are we then lifting up right who who are we giving more power to to basically become invincible and have no competitors in in that trait right if we're saying that this is caught in the cross section because the the idea in this story is not that this this family was targeted even though I do think they could have been, right? That's not how this story is being written. This story is being written in a sense that this family, these, these, you know, whatever, nine, six to nine people, some were children, a lot of adults, a lot of children as well, a lot of women. Um, all these people were killed because they were caught in a crossfire, right? Even though they, they were, they were bombed, some of these shootings happened up close, they could have they could have pulled back, right? There were several kind of, um, there were several things that happened here. One car pulls up, gets shot up. The other ones turn around and get some help. They come back. Everyone gets murdered, right? It's, there's like a, a sequence here that makes me think that this seems a lot more like a targeted assassination of a rich U.S. Mormon family that wasn't willing to pay up for the last decade and they just said, fuck it, you out, right? These people used to live in the U.S. and they kind of then they kind of moved to Mexico to kind of have like their own kind of colony thing that they set up. And, yo, the cartel said, all right, cool. You good. You got it. You got money to stay here. You got to pay up. You're going to run us some of this shit. They didn't want to do it. They want to keep their money. Right now we're talking about sending U.S. troops in. That's a story that makes sense to me. The idea that there's two cartels fighting and they're caught in the crossfire. And then now we're going to go in and what we're going to go to war on two fronts. Right. So we're going to fight two different cartels at once in Mexico in a place where we don't necessarily truly understand. So one, either we go in and we fight a war, a drug war that we can't win because we don't even know who our enemies are because our enemies are each other's enemies. Right. And they're definitely going to ban up to get us the fuck out of there. I don't see our troops doing well with that. I mean, people obviously have incredible weapons the the car that they if you look at the car of the, that these people died in the car is burnt to a crisp does it make sense for america to go into mexico and fight all the cartels that could potentially ban up and just get us the fuck out of there and go back to their game does it make sense for america to go in and target one cartel then leaving a vacuum that another cartel is going to fill immediately and become 10 times stronger exponentially stronger how is this going to work, right? So we have to really think about kind of like the further implications of this. But the first step to really accept is this is how American intervention works, right? A family is killed 
Right. And then this is also why conspiracy theories pop up, because people look and they say, well, did America actually want this to happen so that they could go into this war so that all of these people can make billions of dollars? And that's why it's hard to to not take these conspiracy theories really serious, because the truth is that, from my opinion, that America doesn't necessarily set these things up to happen. America doesn't plan you know, for this, for the LeBaron family to to be murdered in this way. But America knows that it could happen. And instead of preventing it, maybe they take their chances and see what happens. And if it does happen, this is how we respond, right? So it makes so much makes sense that it makes so much sense that someone like Trump, who is a warmonger, will look at a war situation and possibly say, oh, let's do it. Let's go to war with Mexico. Let's send in troops, so I, I, you know, I, I, this is this is the kind of story that we have to kind of pay attention to, mostly because it can bubble up and become something else, especially if the media sensationalizes it. Um, I think the nice thing is that right now the media is very pro Mexico and very anti Trump, so we most likely have a situation where this will kind of be swept under the rug. You'll have these rich people, the LeBaron family, that are going to feel slighted, that are going to feel like America should have stepped up and defended them. The Mormon community could get behind this. The Christian community could roll from that. And people could feel like, hey, what's the deal? What happened to the America that would go in and, and stand up for their 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 citizens' rights to, to, <laughs> to enforce their own rights across the world? You know, of course, you know, rest in peace to everybody in the family, you know, but I do think that they they definitely knew the risk that they were taking by setting setting up this colony for their family um, and also just being there. Right. So I'm, I'm sure that even by the way that they responded to all this, the way that their family is responding on social media, this is something that they knew um, was a possibility that could happen. So I do feel bad for them. And I don't mean to come across as like some sort of apologist for the cartels, but I do think that there's a certain villainization of what they do without without any sort of understanding or um, perspective shifting and kind of see how these things develop the way that they do because the cartels are also a product of their own environments that the U.S. created. So if the U.S. goes in and tries to create any sort of vengeance or creates any sort of, you know, does any sort of like revenge killing or tries to get any sort of like vindication from these sort of situations in general, then it is once again going to be that same kind of like tried and true story of Americans creating an issue, right, such as the drug war, which creates the cartels, and then punishing those who act out in the wake of the drama and in the wake of the actual terrorism that America creates throughout the world.